Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 27th, the Halloween edition. If you notice, a little bit of a black eye there. Got the right eye fixed. A little bit more sore than the left one. The left one was uh, real easy to deal with. Right one, ah, a little bit of sore, but both working fine. Back to uh, 2025 in each eye, even before they're totally healed. So looking good. Thank you, everybody, for your thoughts, your uh, well wishes, your prayers. I really appreciate it a lot. And uh, I'll get into, because of the fact that I can see very well what I'm uh, back into, one of my old hobbies. And this was even a request from a viewer. I was going to touch on this anyway, but I'm going to get a little bit more involved because a viewer asked me a question about this related to last week's TDD report. But first up, before we get into the Halloween edition, and there's going to be some uh, Halloween-y stuff at the end for you guys to check out. Um, this is from Pete a writer's life. This was posted in one of the groups that a lot of us moto vloggers are aware of, but in case any of you are not aware of, Contour is back. And I'll read just a little bit of excerpt from it and then you can uh, go to the website. But Clark Capital plans to bring back the Contour business and brand, confirmed James Clark, the CEO and managing partner of the Utah based investment company, speaking with GeekWire via phone. He also is looking at bidding on, now they did not buy the rights to all the current stock that's uh, going to be sold in the future, but they are going to try to bid on that and see if they can catch that. But they have all the rights to uh, future production and licensing, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully Contour is back and we have quite a few people comp competing with each other, which always works out better. I think the more competitors we have, always the better for us as consumers. Well, let's get into satellite viewing now, I will tell you, I'm just going to get into the very basics of it myself because I'm getting back into it from a, a lot of time with not having very good eyes and being able to do very much of anything. But what you do to start out before you even get into going on the websites and getting into the tracking software, which I will talk about a little bit, first, you've got to train your eyes, if nothing else. Now, I'm fortunate enough to live very close to O'Hare Airport. So what I've been doing is going out in my backyard and actually just sitting, looking up in the sky and training myself to spot the highest of the airplanes that fly by and trying to get you know, just, just get your eyes trained to be able to see far away moving objects. And then when you get good at that, bring out a set of binoculars. And when I tell you binoculars, don't go out and buy these super, super high powered binoculars. Start with just a regular set of 7x35s or 8x40, something like that, and get the most wide angle you can. Perfect place to get um, decent binoculars at a decent price is look at where people that um, do bird watching do. That's just fine because you're just basically scanning the sky. You don't want super, super power. You want wide angle to be able to put the binoculars up to your eyes and be able to spot high flying airplanes. Once you get halfway decent at that, the first thing you should try to start spotting is the International Space Station. One of the easiest things to observe. If you don't have a chance to buy binoculars, you don't even need it because these th the, the International Space Station is as easier, easier to spot than an airplane. And the place to go for that is called spotthestation.nasa.gov. If you live close to a major city, just click on one of the major cities. I'm close enough to Chicago, I just use the coordinates for Chicago and it will give me the correct, uh, where it, the correct direction the space station is coming in from and the correct elevation. Now in the case if you don't have a good horizon, which in my backyard I don't, being trees that are all around, I look at the observations when the space station is going to be flying over at least an elevation of 40 degrees or higher. And as a matter of fact, tonight, the space station is going to be flying overhead at an elevation of 80 degrees. I mean, that's getting pretty close to straight up. And the higher the elevation, the longer the sighting time, too. But practice on the International Space Station. It's going to actually be flying overhead for a total of eight minutes. Anything six minutes or above is really good. It gives you time, it gives you time to be able to spot it with your eyes. And then, especially if you're going six minutes or beyond, you can train yourself to put the binoculars up to your eyes and spot it and keep on tracking with it. Do things like that first before you get into any of the sophisticated programs or try to see any of the more difficult satellites. I was reading up lately about some of the amateur observers now with the right equipment have even been able to spot geostationary satellites, which I didn't think was really possible for an amateur to do, but that's getting pretty sophisticated. However, if you want to move on, I'm actually going to post those sites too. So once you get past the part of being able to spot the International Space Station, if you're able to actually go out and do it three times in a row, no trouble as far as being able to spot where it's coming in from, the elevations and everything like that, then you can move on to something a little bit more advanced. But 
at least get to get to that point. Uh, when you look at this site, depending on how you want to do it, if for some reason you're way far away from a major city, you can also load a small Java program in there to track it based on your actual zip code or your coordinates. There's different ways you can set it up, but uh, yeah, get get good at the basics first before anything else, and then uh, from there on you can uh, go from there. And also they're going to list in the uh, NASA website, they're going to list uh, two other things that maybe don't make sense to you. Um, the letters ISS stand for International Space Station, but they're also going to list ATV-4 and Cygnus. Those are resupply missions. Those are robotic resupply missions. You can also, if you want to get a little more sophisticated, you can spot those going on. But I would say at first just start out with the International Space Station and see how good you can do there, and then move on to the more sophisticated sites. But uh, yeah, there's a group of about... I don't know, 20 or so amateurs worldwide that even are getting so good they can spot um, classified satellites that aren't even tracked by any official entities whatsoever and keep track of them. And just in case anybody's thinking, oh, we're giving away some kind of secrets or something like that, if amateurs can do it with telescopes and stopwatches and uh, even a set of binoculars or, or bare vision, believe believe it or not, any, any other sophisticated government, they know what's going on and uh, know all about it. There's... There's no secret information being divulged or anything like that. They, uh, whoever wants to know it can know it easily enough. And last up, this was sent by my buddy Mick. This was Halloween pictures, and as we go out on the TDD report, I am going to feature a cool song that was sent to me by uh, BC. This is a reference to a, a group that's kind of a cool geek group. Um, I'll give the links to their stuff, and we'll play that song as we go out along with some Halloween pictures, and then go to the site and check out all the rest of them. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before I end, I've got to show you my wizard staff that I made up too. This is what I will be uh, passing out treats. I will be at the door, and uh, this is a kangaroo claw, crystal ball, and this is a mulberry stick from my backyard. Aged. I've had it set out and drying, so it's a uh, Nice and age-hardened, but isn't that cool? So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week. Is string theory right? Is it just fantasy? Caught in the landscape, out of touch with reality. Compactified, on S5 or T-Star. Oh.